Castlevania. One of the most loved video game franchises among gamers, and my personal favorite above all others. Castlevania tells the story of the heroic Belmont clan and their lineage who are destined to pass down the magical whip known as the Vampire Killer. A whip that had the ability to change form and constantly be upgraded, and was powerful enough to strike fear into the darkest of creatures, including Death himself and his master Dracula, King of the Vampires. Since 1986, Castlevania has spawned multiple sequels, prequels, remakes, side stories, and spin-offs. However, most of these games weren't made in chronological order, and some have even been taken in and out of the official canon. So we're gonna clean up the timeline and make sense of the entire storyline, including most of the main games, while filling in some details between the games. Before we get started, let's establish some rules. Since you may notice some games missing from this timeline, Castlevania Legends has been taken out of the official canon, but more importantly, it directly conflicts with the events surrounding Dracula's hatred of humanity. So, that's out. Some games such as the original Castlevania, Super Castlevania 4, and Castlevania Chronicles are all telling the same story in a different way. So for the purpose of the timeline, we're just gonna pick the original ones. The Order of Shadows 2007 mobile phone game was never meant to be canon. If it were canon, it would conflict with the original Castlevania, so that one's out too. Castlevania Judgment and Harmony of Despair were just side stories combining the different generations of Castlevania characters into one game, also never meant to be part of the main timeline. Kid Dracula is just a humorous parody of the Castlevania games, not meant to be taken seriously. As far as arcades go, Haunted Castle is seen by many as a different retelling of Simon's adventure from the original Castlevania, and the 2009 Japanese Castlevania arcade has little to no story, and involves nameless generic characters, so they're both out too. So let's go ahead and get this started. Welcome to the Castlevania Timeline, Part 1, Origins of Evil. Let's take a step back in time to the late 11th century. At the time, Europe was being protected by knights appointed by the church. One battalion of knights were so skilled in combat, they were said to be invincible because of the efforts of two men. Leon Belmont and Matthias Kronquist. Leon was one of the church's fiercest warriors, and Matthias was a genius tactician. Together, they developed a strong friendship, and they led a group of knights to victory time and time again. But when they finally returned home from battle, Matthias received devastating news. His wife, Elizabetha, had passed away suddenly while he was away. His grief was so intense that he could no longer fight, and he became bedridden. For the next year, Leon continued fighting without his friend, and he discovered an army of monsters in the region he was responsible for. He asked the church for permission to destroy these monsters, but was denied due to the crusades being fought in the east. While Leon was attempting to get permission from the church, his fiance Sarah was kidnapped. Matthias discovered that the appearance of the monsters was tied to a vampire called Walter Bernhardt, who lives in a castle in the forest of eternal night, and that Leon Sarah was taken there. So he relays this information to his close friend, and Leon decides to leave his knighthood and the church behind in order to go rescue her. This brings us to the year 1094, to the events of Castlevania Lament of Innocence. On his way through the forest, Leon met a shop owner called Ronaldo Gandalfi, whose daughter Justine was turned into a vampire five years ago by Walter. She had killed her mother and brother and escaped out a window. Using the art of alchemy, Ronaldo built a whip that had the potential to become more powerful, but he was never able to complete it. Regardless, he went after Walter, but the whip wasn't able to hurt him. Walter allowed him to live and let him stay in the forest so he can help others that were trying to face him. To Walter, this was all just a game, and he enjoyed kidnapping women in order to lure powerful hunters to his castle. The force of your grief can only make me stronger. Thank you. Thinking that Leon could unlock the whip's full potential, Ronaldo handed him the Whip of Alchemy and enchanted his gauntlet with magic that would allow him to use ancient relics found in the castle. Ready to save Sarah, Leon headed to Walter's castle. I'm coming to save you.
He also discovered that he had to test his strength against five guardians that were guarding the door to Walter's chambers. The snake-headed monster of Greek mythology, Medusa, It's Ronaldo's whip. Still, it's no match for my master! An undead fire-spewing parasite, a golem bound together by rocks, the seductive demon known as the succubus, and a vampire named Dahim Armstair, who craved for revenge against Walter after being locked away by his master. After defeating all five guardians, Leon encountered Walter and attacked him with the Whip of Alchemy. Well? It can't be. My attack doesn't work. I see. But it had no effect on him. Taunting Leon, Walter gave Sarah back and went to his throne room. Thinking she was wounded, Leon took Sarah to Ronaldo for help, and he realized she had been bitten by Walter and was slowly turning into a vampire. What are you saying? That's... that's not possible! You're lying! That can't be! But as time passes, she will gradually lose her humanity. Like my daughter. As she was slowly losing her humanity, it was impossible to stop the transformation. Overhearing the conversation, Sarah ran outside and threatened to end her own life in order to avoid becoming a vampire. Ronaldo revealed to Leon that the only way to harm Walter would be to complete the whip. For the whip to gain its true form, it needed the sacrifice of a tainted soul that was willing to merge with it. Sarah begged Leon to use the whip against her so he can stop Walter and save others from sharing her fate. My soul can save others. I do not want anyone else to suffer my fate. Why? Please! Use the whip against Sarah! I swear to you, no more will suffer your fate! <gasps> Thank you, Leon. Sacrificing Sarah to the whip unlocked the whip's full power, and it became the legendary Vampire Killer. The only weapon capable of hurting Walter, and one of the few weapons strong enough to stand against the forces of evil. Fueled by rage and armed with the Vampire Killer, Leon rushed to face Walter again in combat. Welcome. I have been waiting, Leon. Walter, I will never forgive you. I see. It seems you have enjoyed the gift that I gave you. Yes. Thanks to that, I now have the power to defeat you. Well, that power is quite something. But I am beloved by the night. I'll kill you and the knight! What? what?! Now, there is nothing left to protect you! I'll fulfill my promise to Sarah now! Shocked that he was able to be defeated by a human, the immortal Walter promised to return to life. But as he did, the embodiment of death appeared and absorbed his soul. <laughs> no! You betrayed me! I shall me. take your soul! transferring the vampire's powers into another person. <sighs> Matthias? 
Leon's old friend Matthias suddenly appeared and revealed that he had manipulated the entire situation in order to get Leon to strike down Walter. Matthias had recreated the Crimson Stone, an artifact that could trap the soul of a powerful vampire. Wanting revenge against God for taking away his wife, Matthias was filled with hatred and used the Crimson Stone to gain eternal life and control death itself. Matthias was the reason Sarah was dead. You abandoned humanity? That's right. By becoming a vampire, I obtained eternal life. It was my revenge against God. We have risked our lives and fought for the sake of God. But God mercilessly stole away the one I loved most. If limited life is God's decree, then I shall defy it! And within that eternity, I shall curse him forevermore! And he offered Leon the same immortality that he now possessed. But Leon refused, and Matthias said goodbye to his dear friend. Did you not defeat Walter with hatred in your heart too? Yes, I'd be lying if I claimed otherwise. But defeating him... No. Preventing others from suffering the same cursed fate. That was Sarah's dying wish. <sighs> and unleashed death on him. I thought that you would understand. Dawn is coming. Farewell, Leon. Death is all yours. After defeating Death with the Vampire Killer, Death reveals that he would return as long as his new master, Matthias, survives. And Leon promises that his bloodline will one day hunt him down and destroy him. Give him this message. This whip and my kinsmen will destroy you someday. From this day on, the Belmont clan will hunt the night. That concludes the events of Castlevania Lament of Innocence. After destroying Walter and defeating Death, Leon lived out his life and passed down the Vampire Killer to his children. All Belmont children would be trained as vampire hunters and the whip would be passed down generation after generation in preparation for the day that Matthias would reappear. Matthias went into hiding and eventually used his dark powers to create a castle, which would constantly change forms and had a life of its own. To further separate himself from his previous human identity, he changed his name to Vlad Depeche and crowned himself Lord of the Vampires and King of the Night. He recruited anybody that turned their back on God and allowed them to practice dark arts and forbidden magic in his castle. In the 1450s, a boy called Hector was born who would play a huge role in the future of mankind. He was raised by abusive parents and the children and adults of the town thought his silver hair and his love of animals was unnatural so they shunned him. One day the local church in the town burned down and the blame was immediately placed on Hector. In fear for his life Hector ran away from the town and an unnatural voice guided him to Vlad's castle. Hector was accepted into the castle and he was raised within its walls while learning how to harness dark powers to summon and control devils. Together with another man called Isaac they became highly trained in these dark arts and were known as Devil Forge Masters. During this time, Vlad had also met a kind woman named Lisa, who reminded him of Elizabetha. He fell in love with her and she loved him, despite him being a vampire with a hatred of anything holy. And together, they had a half-human, half-vampire son named Adrian Fahrenheit Depeche, who would later play a pivotal role in the protection of the human race. 
sometime in the 1470s, false rumors began spreading that Lisa was practicing witchcraft, and she was arrested and sentenced to death in the middle of the day. Adrian rushed to his mother's aid, but she stopped him from interfering. She told her son not to hate the humans for what they did to her, and to tell his father that she would always love him. Then Adrian watched as his mother was burned at the stake. This is the event that set the man that was once Matthias on a dark path he would never return from. In addition to being angry against God, he now decided that all of humanity needed to be destroyed. He renamed himself Dracula, meaning son of the dragon or son of the devil then built an army of followers in his castle and appointed Hector and Isaac as the generals of his legions and sent them against the people of Europe. Unable to agree with his father's hatred of humanity, Adrian renamed himself Alucard to oppose his father and refused to fight for him, creating a rift between father and son. These were the darkest times humanity had ever seen. Dracula's forces burned entire towns to the ground and no mercy was given. The church sent their own armies against Dracula, but nobody ever returned. They had no force powerful enough to stand against the King of Darkness. But there was hope. In these devastated lands, a man appeared named Trevor Belmont, who started fighting back against Dracula's armies. Stories began spreading about this man equipped with a holy whip and powers that monsters feared. The Belmont clan members were known by the church to be powerful vampire hunters, but they feared their power and exiled them from society long ago. The stories of Trevor and the whip reached Dracula, and he realized that Trevor was a direct descendant of Leon Belmont, and remembered the promise his old friend made him almost 400 years before. This whip and my kinsmen will destroy you someday. From this day on, the Belmont clan will hunt the night. He knew that Trevor and the Vampire Killer were a direct threat to his rule, and he sent Hector with a group of monsters to find and kill him. Hector left on his mission, but he was racked with guilt over the devastation that Dracula was causing and the part he had played in it. Betraying his master, he decided to let Trevor live in the hopes that he would end Dracula. Hector destroyed the monsters that were sent with him and he ran, but not before being seriously wounded. Hector collapsed from the pain, but he was found by a young woman named Rosalie. Rosalie took Hector into her home and slowly nursed him back to health. Hearing more stories of Trevor Belmont's heroics, Dracula realized that Hector had betrayed him and angrily sent Isaac to bring Hector back to the castle to face his punishment, leaving the castle unprotected. This leads us to the year 1476 and the events of Castlevania III Dracula's Curse. Trevor made his way through the devastated ruins of the villages destroyed by Dracula's forces and eventually broke through to the outskirts of Castlevania. Trevor came face to face with a monster who looked oddly human. <laughs> Defeating the monster, Trevor unknowingly saved a man called Grant Dynasty, who was a pirate helping a rebel group fight against Dracula. The group was slaughtered and Grant was turned into a mindless demon by Dracula. To thank Trevor, Grant joined him on his quest. Trevor was no longer alone in his mission. Dracula's son Alucard was also waiting to encounter Trevor on the path to his father. After testing Trevor's strength, Alucard was amazed at how powerful the young vampire hunter was and revealed that he wanted to help Trevor destroy his father and stop the chaos he was unleashing onto the world. 
Trevor also rescued a young sorceress who had been turned into a statue named Sypha Belnades, who was part of one of the church's hunting parties formed to stop Dracula. Working together, Trevor, Grant, Alucard, and Sypha fought their way through Dracula's castle and came face to face with death trying desperately to protect his master. While they faced death, Isaac had tracked down Hector, and disobeying Dracula, attempted to kill him instead. Trevor made it to Dracula's throne room and unleashed the power of the Vampire Killer on the King of the Vampires. After destroying his vampire form, Dracula became a mindless creature struggling to keep itself together. And using his last bit of power, Dracula formed into a more powerful body in a final struggle against Trevor. Trevor had fulfilled his destiny and destroyed Dracula, and his armies vanished with him. During their battle, Isaac and Hector suddenly felt something and stopped, frozen in shock. They could no longer feel Dracula's presence and sense that he'd been destroyed. Isaac became enraged and attacked Hector for his betrayal. Defending himself, Hector slashed Isaac, wounding him. Isaac staggered in pain, falling off a cliff to his doom. With Dracula and Isaac both gone, Hector returned to Rosalie's village and she convinced him to stay with her where he could live in peace. But unknown to Hector, Isaac survived his wounds and stumbled away to plot his revenge against him. After Dracula's death, Grant left to help the devastated areas rebuild. Alucard couldn't bear the guilt of having helped destroy Dracula. Even though he had brought such misery and destruction to the human race, he was still his father and he still loved him. So Alucard returned to his tomb and sealed himself away from humanity. Trevor and Sypha left together and she treated the wounds he had suffered while fighting Dracula. But as he was recovering, Trevor felt uneasy, and he couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong, and time would prove him right. Trevor and Sypha became closer and eventually married. With Belmont blood flowing through Trevor's veins and Sypha's magical abilities, their marriage ensured that their bloodline would be even more powerful than they were. The Belmont clan became an honored and respected presence in the region. Even though Dracula was gone, peace did not come over the land. Famine, starvation, and disease spread, and the people of Europe became violent, with innocent people being accused of witchcraft and burned at the stake regularly. Trevor set out to investigate why this madness was spreading, and discovered that the towns that were closest to the ruins of Castlevania were the ones that were affected the strongest. Trevor realized this was somehow Dracula's doing, and recalled something that happened during his battle with the King of Darkness. With his final breath, Dracula had promised that the world would feel his sorrow and his wrath. Unknown to Trevor at the time, Dracula had placed a powerful curse on the land that slowly crept its way into the mind of the people, driving them mad and causing them to destroy themselves. Back in Rosalie's village, Rosalie and Hector, now married, lived a normal life. Isaac craved for revenge and spied on Hector, constantly waiting for an opportunity to destroy his life. Seeing how happy Rosalie and Hector were together, Isaac decided it was time to strike. Rosalie was a merchant in the nearby town who would sell fruits and vegetables occasionally. One day Isaac decided to follow her and started spreading rumors that the apples she had been selling were poisoned. Infected by Dracula's curse, the townspeople believed his lies. Worried that Rosalie had been gone for a long time, Hector went into town looking for her and made a horrifying discovery. Rosalie had become a victim of the frequent witch burnings and there was nothing left of her. 
Hector felt Isaac's presence and knew he was behind her death. Filled with grief and anger, Hector rushed after Isaac and followed his trail to an abandoned castle. This leads us to the year 1479 and the events of Castlevania Curse of Darkness. Show yourself, Isaac! I know you're here! Hector! Is that you? Hector, the fool who betrayed our Lord Dracula. That matters not! I've come to exact my revenge upon you, for the death of Rosalie! Hector found Isaac and he swore to avenge the death of Rosalie, but Hector had given up his devil forging powers and refused to use such dark abilities. Without those powers, Isaac knew that Hector would have no chance against him, and he used this knowledge to taunt him. Hector followed Isaac into the abandoned castle and discovered a strange tomb that was once a site used to summon devils. Hector knew that he needed to reclaim his powers if he wanted to stand a chance against Isaac. Heed my words, O oh great powers of darkness! Immaculate being, appear before me After reawakening his powers, a monk who Hector had never seen before appeared, and introduced himself as Zed. Zed claimed that he was there searching for a way to purify the land and free the people from the darkness of Dracula's curse. And he informed Hector that Isaac had escaped the castle and made his way to a chapel on the other side of the nearby mountains. As Hector chased Isaac through the mountains, he ran into a mysterious woman who strongly reminded him of Rosalie. But to his disappointment, this wasn't Rosalie returned from the dead. This was actually a local witch named Julia, who had escaped all the witch burnings happening in the western lands. Julia offered to help Hector on his quest to find Isaac and led him to her shop, where he can find any supplies he would need. Then Hector continued his way through the mountains. Eventually he made it to a nearby temple and encountered a man carrying a weapon that Hector immediately recognized, the Vampire Killer. And the man standing before him was Trevor Belmont, the man who had slayed Dracula. That whip! Are you not Trevor Belmont, the one who defeated Lord Dracula? That I am, though I did not fight alone. There were many brave warriors beside me. Trevor was traveling through the region looking for the source of Dracula's curse. Thinking it was Hector's doing, Trevor attacked him. Could he be? Answer me! Are you the Devil Forge Master? I am. Then this is the hour of your death. Hector stood no chance against Trevor's might. Realizing that Hector wasn't powerful enough to be responsible for the curse, Trevor stopped his attack. Hector told Trevor about Isaac and both men agreed that they were on the same side and the two of them parted ways. After going through several hardships and terrifying monsters, Hector had finally found Isaac and the two men viciously attacked each other, continuing the battle that they started three years before. But the fight was interrupted by the appearance of Julia as she tried to stop Isaac and Isaac escaped. Revealing herself to be Isaac's sister, Julia told Hector that Isaac had lost his mind due to the effects of Dracula's curse, but she understood that Isaac was too far gone at this point, and gave Hector her blessing should he need to slay Isaac. Only you can free him from the curse. And also, if you are the one to slay him, only then could I live with it. I understand. After escaping from the battle, Isaac ran into Trevor and struggled to defend himself against the powerful vampire hunter. As Hector found them battling each other, Isaac escaped again. Then Zed, the monk that Hector had met previously, appeared to him again to eagerly offer his assistance in finding Isaac, perhaps a little too eagerly. 
Hector discovered that Isaac was hiding in a hidden chamber back in the abandoned castle. Hector traveled back there and met up with Trevor, who discovered the passage could only be opened by spilling the blood of a Belmont, and only being skilled with dark powers could enter. He knew Hector was the only one who could enter the passage and reach Isaac, but Trevor had to test Hector and see if he had grown in strength since their last encounter. Show me just how much power you've gained. Wait, I have no reason to fight you. This is your reason. Defend yourself! Satisfied with Hector's increased power, Trevor cut himself and spilled his blood onto the floor, opening the hidden passageway. And what lies beyond this point? Do not ask if you knew your heart might waver. For now, hold the image of Isaac in your mind. Think only of defeating him. Hector, hunt him down. And when you have him, show him no mercy. After making his way through the mysterious Infinite Corridor, Trevor encountered the Guardian of the Passage and destroyed him. <laughs> but after destroying the Guardian, something completely unexpected happened. Dracula's castle rose again. Isaac appeared behind Trevor and wounded him, revealing that he purposely led them to that location. The only way he could resurrect Dracula's castle was to release a massive amount of dark power, and the battle between Hector and the Guardian generated more than enough to bring back Castlevania. Hector rushed to his old home, Dracula's castle, and Julia found him there. Hector knew that Castlevania was tied directly to Dracula's power, so he knew there was a possibility that his old master was alive again, and he knew he would need Trevor Belmont's help if Dracula had returned. But the wound that Trevor suffered would keep him from being able to help. That is so... We must call Belmont. It is he who slew Dracula before. He can help us now! Alas, he cannot. But why? He suffered a terrible injury. I, I barely saved his life, but even now it hangs by a thread. I see. The hour is late. Away to your purpose. And you to safety. Back to your home. Hector entered the castle and was determined to stop Isaac at all cost. He found Isaac and decided he would put an end to him once and for all. Hector defeated him and as he was about to strike the final blow, he realized that Dracula's curse was affecting him and causing his thirst for revenge. Do not let the curse take hold of you. I'm certain that she would not wish you to pay such a price for your revenge. This murderous impulse. This thirst for bloody vengeance. This is not me. It is the curse. Dracula's curse. Hector refused to let the curse take over him, and Zed appeared to him once again. But this time, Zed wasn't there to help. He revealed that he was behind everything, and wanted to use Hector's body to resurrect Dracula back into physical form. But he needed somebody that was completely taken over by Dracula's curse. Disappointed that he couldn't use Hector in his intense power, Zed was forced to settle for Isaac, and decided to use his weaker body for the resurrection instead. And at that point, Hector realized that Zed was something much more than he seemed. Who are you? That weapon! You are none other than death! Soon my master will enter Isaac's body. Though you were favored, Isaac will do. Dracula will once more walk the night. And as for you, it is time for you to die. Human 
After defeating death, Hector made his way to Dracula's chamber at the top of the castle and hoped he wasn't too late to stop his old master from returning. Ah, the traitor Hector. Lord Dracula, you are reborn. Why did you unleash your hatred upon the humans? When you began slaughtering them indiscriminately, I had no choice but to disobey you! Humans are not worth the air they breathe! The powerful always judge the weak. Thus, I sentenced them to extinction. You betrayed me, Hector. And for that, the punishment is death. I will not flee as I did before! Hector was determined to stop Dracula and attacked him. Being forced to use Isaac's body for the resurrection prevented Dracula from returning back to life with his full power intact. Dracula was weaker than before and Hector knew he had a chance. Surprised by Hector's strength, Dracula called upon the dark powers he had left in a desperate attempt to kill the man who betrayed him. Trevor defeated Dracula and he promised that his curse would remain, but Hector had prepared himself to undo it. My soul may return to the abyss, but the curse will not be lifted. It will fester in the hearts of humans until they obliterate themselves. I am a devil forge master. I can turn your curse aside. Transform it into something harmless, and so it shall be. Rest in peace. This, then, is the final forge. Heed my words, O oh great powers of darkness! Appear before me now! Dark Lord was sent back into the abyss he came from. The curse was gone and the darkness that the world had suffered from for so long vanished. Julia invited Hector to stay with her in her home near the mountains and Hector agreed, living the rest of his days in peace and closing off the events of Castlevania, Curse of Darkness. Trevor Belmont, having survived his wounds, returned home to Sypha, eventually passing down the vampire killer to his children, hoping it would never be needed again. Join me tomorrow when we explore a world fearful of Dracula's return, a world in which Trevor's descendants stand vigilant with the vampire killer in hand, in the Castlevania Timeline Part 2, Destiny of the Belmont Clan.